The government's anti-boycott bill, which will return to Parliament at the start of next week for its second reading, it threatens to erode local democracy, it restricts freedom of expression, and it completely undermines campaigns for social and, of course, for climate justice. Um, a huge coalition of nearly 70 civil society organisations made up of trade unions, charities, NGOs, faith groups, climate justice groups, human rights groups, solidarity organisations, um, all coming together and calling on MPs to reject this dangerous bill in Parliament. Boycott and divestment have been long used to campaign peacefully for progressive change in this country and around the world. They are important tools for accountability and for core elements of freedom of expression, which should be protected in a democratic society. Now, the government has claimed that the bill is motivated by concerns that such boycotts may legitimise and drive anti-Semitism, as these types of campaigns, in their words, overwhelmingly target Israel. Now, we have to be really clear, these claims are wrong, and they are intended to stoke fear and, of course, division. Any boycott that discriminates against a section of any community would already be illegal under equalities laws. The call for BDS is a call that has come from Palestinian civil society and aims to pressure those who are complicit with violations of their rights. It is ludicrous to suggest that anti-Semitism is caused by divestment from companies involved in breaches of international law. And that's what this is. And such rhetoric draws a false equivalence between Jewish people and the policies of the state of Israel and the treatment of Palis and treats Palestinians by a different standard to any other group. There is a long and proud tradition of BDS campaigns, and including the Bristol bus boycott in 1963 to protest against a company's refusal to employ black or Asian bus crews, the campaign by women in Britain to reject sugar produced on slave plantations during the 19th century, and of course, divestment from fossil fuel companies. Millions of people in Britain, including many local authorities and universities, were part of the boycott movement to, to end apartheid and the con contributed to the creation of a democratic South Africa and that was celebrated by anti-apartheid leaders, including Nelson Mandela. At the time, similar restrictions were introduced in an unsuccessful attempt to stifle these acts of international solidarity. Had the anti-boycott bill been in place then, it would have forced public bodies to do business with that brutal, racist and criminal regime. And we all know how wrong this would have been. This is a bill that affects everyone and all of our rights, our right to protest, our rights to organise and our rights to demand better. And every voice across civil society should be united against this bill. Now, worryingly, we've heard reports that Labour are planning to abstain at the second reading of this bill and that there will be a three line whip imposed on MPs over this bill. And that means that any MPs uh, who, who don't go along with the whip may be threatened with losing the Labour whip if they oppose the bill at the second reading. So I think it's time we act together and support uh, MPs who want to oppose this bill. And there are things that we can do to make that happen. So firstly, number one, help us defeat this bill. Go on to the Palestine Solidarity Campaign website, sign the petition and contact your local MP urging them to reject this bill for the reasons stated. Number two, while this is a terrible bill, it doesn't stop us collectively as individuals participating in boycotts against the private sector, uh, for example, targeting banks. So join those campaigns and show that you won't be deterred by this legislation. And thirdly, speak up as Labour members and make clear that you support boycotts and that you expect the Labour Party to defend our civil liberties against this deeply authoritarian and far-right conservative legislation.